Hi everyone. What I want to talk about in this video is how I connected water to my new refrigerator. My new refrigerator has both an automatic ice maker and the drinking water dispenser. So I want to take you through the process that involved hooking it up using a series of photos. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is a drinking water filter that I have for my home. What's different than what someone would have that lives in the country is the pipes in there, the white pipes, are quarter inch. So this is only suitable for drinking water. It's not an entire household water like what you would bathe in or what you would use for washing the pots and pans. It's five stages. The first filter there is to show you that it's catching the grit and then it keeps purifying the water. And the fifth stage up top center is UV that kills bacteria and viruses in the water. And just left of it is a remote reader that just shows me how much water's gone through it so I know when to change the filters. So the goal is connecting this to my new refrigerator so it can benefit from it as well. So what I did when I got this water system a few years ago was put a tap in the two bathrooms and at the kitchen sink. So I'm just going to be branching off of it. And if you look under the tap, there's a little shut off valve there, meaning if and when the tap needs to be changed, the whole system of the host water doesn't need to be shut off. It can just be the specific tap that I'm replacing at that time. And I wanted to maintain that type of continuity with the refrigerator as well so that when it gets disconnected, if the refrigerator wears out or it needs servicing, the water can just be disconnected and the host won't have to be without water. So for example, you don't want to have to not be able to flush your toilet while the fridge is out of commission. These are the three main adapters outside of the shutoff valve. So from left to right, we have what's used to make a corner. It's referred to as an elbow in plumbing. What I want you to pay attention to though, is this is quarter inch compression fittings and if you're doing the hose by hand you really don't need to use the elbows for quarter inch because the natural curve of it is just going to be ever so slightly larger than what the fitting can do. The one in the middle is for joining two lengths together. So let's say you buy a 25 foot length but your fridge is 40 feet you would join it with the with that connector and on the right is a T valve and that's spelled T E E the same is available for copper plumbing or PEX plumbing when you're running the main wire lines for your house its purpose is to run a branch line and basically take one and make two out of it the little blue clips are what keeps the flexible hose from pulling back out as long as they're in place, they're held under compression, and they're not able to back out, at least not with a lot of force. So we withstand the casual brushing of you going sort of by it, or if you rub against it when you're sitting down, for example, for doing maintenance. To disconnect, what you do is pop the little blue out. There's, you'll see there's a tab at the end of it that you can just, or in the middle that you just grab onto, and you push it in, the hose just comes right out. It's not a big deal for the quarter inch size. You can do it by hand. There is a professional tool available, but you really don't need it for quarter inch. The lesson or the biggest tip I could give you would be to look for a kit on Amazon that comes with both the hose and just a whack of connections, like eight or 10 of them. You'll save yourself a bunch of money. You can buy these individually from the big box stores, but but just to get it in that individual bag and on the wall, it's passed through about six sets of hands. And each of those sets of hands have had to be paid. 
So even though the connector didn't cost a heck of a lot to make, by the time six people have had their salary to get it onto the store shelf, the cost of it's gone way up. So you can find lengths of hoses, you know, 20 feet, 25, 50 feet that have a bunch of these connectors in it and you'll save yourself a bunch of money and that is what I did both when I ran the original water lines for the bathrooms and kitchen sink for the drinking water and for the part that involved hooking the refrigerator up. Um, this is number two plastic. You'll see that on the right side with the T. That's HDPE, I believe. It's a high density polymer. Um, it's made for drinking water. I would suggest if you're going to be away for more than a week that you would flush all the lines out just so that the water is fresh inside them again. But generally, this is safe as long as the water is not standing still in the pipes. This is an example of a different style tee than I showed on the previous screen, but it's where one comes in to go out. And I did, if you look closely there, I did use both the tee and a pair of elbows. And what's below this is where the water lines go into the wall and start traveling to their destination. I happen to have used an electrical tool for fishing wires in the wall, but you can do what you need within reason with these things and it's really not hard. I will point out the metal screw. That has a drywall plug behind it to hold it in place. And then I've used quarter inch cable connectors. Those are the black ones for securing it to the wall before were the two entrances. In this particular application, left goes to the bathroom sink of the previous two photos, and to the right travels both upstairs to the second bathroom and towards the kitchen. So I just wanna show you there is an application where this splits. Now what we're looking at now is below my kitchen sink. And first, if we go left to right, you'll see again one of these style of T's that was in the same photo. So one branch goes down and up to the drinking water tap at the kitchen sink, where the kitchen sink takes away water that's not, that doesn't go into your, your mug or into a pot for cooking water. And then you'll see there that I've got a blue shutoff valve attached to it. Again, it's the same as the bathroom. If the tap breaks and needs to be shut down, the entire host water doesn't need to go off. The water will stop there with that shutoff valve in a left to right orientation instead of being straight through. And then you'll see there, as we go to the right some more, you'll see that I added a label that notes it's for the refrigerator shutoff valve. Just to make it clear what it is, because it's not completely obvious because it's contained in the cupboards that you'll see in a minute. But with getting the parts in bulk, that was easy to add. It'd be an extra $5 if you bought the part individually here in Canada. Then what else you're looking at is the water that goes to the hose and, sorry, to the, the tap and to the dishwasher. That's the one that's got two braids coming off of it. And the other one is the cold water and that just goes to the tap that, that's on the sink. So you're either going left or right depending on if you want hot or cold. Now this is sort of the next step and the next sort of a cheat or a practical application. I've made provision for a built-in dishwasher. I don't have one right now, but it's much easier to have it roughed in than to try to add it after the fact. So the red hose is what would go to a dishwasher if there was one there. The blue hose is for cold water, and in this particular application, it goes to the garden hose out back. But what I want to point out to you is back in 2006, the city had the street where I live on dug up for the summer, and what they did for supplying the residents with water is tapped into a fire hydrant, and water actually came in through that garden hose connection 
and then into my home that way. So I just want to encourage you that if you have a garden hose connection and it busts, it's worth repairing so that in the event that the city does do this, you still have a connection for water and you're not spraying water everywhere instead of having it on your to-do list and being broke for seven years in a row. I want to point out the drawer sliders, the metal edges that you see on the left and right section. There is still approximately a three inch gap in behind there where you can run things in behind. Meaning when the drawer is in, those water house, the water pipes there are not affected by it. There's still a gap of space. So you can get away with running water pipes in behind there, for example, to where my refrigerator goes. Just a little practical tip of installing these things. This is the ultimate and where it leaves the cupboard. Now I want to point out to you, when we drilled this hole, it was started on the inside, but then to make it a clean hole, the hole was finished being drilled on the outside, and that's just to to stop the white melamine from being chipped off. But so that's the path it comes out to. And on the refrigerator, the water connection is low down, approximately 10 inches of, um, off the floor in this particular model. So what you need to see is there's this white hose with the brass connection. What I had to do was put a collar into the white hose. It's miserable work where you sit there and push it in and it takes about 20 minutes to do it. It's miserable, it hurts your hands for a bit, but you keep pushing, keep making a little progress at a time and it gets in, then you can get the, the nut part around it and you're just tightening it together. And since there's a black washer that's built into it, that's a water type, water tight connection that doesn't require the Teflon tape. You'll see to the left of it that I've got a shutoff valve there. And once again, if the fridge needs the water disconnect for servicing, there's a shutoff valve there and the toilets could still be flushed. Or you could still make your meal or whatever, whatever else has to happen. And you'll see on the floor in this broad picture that I've left about six feet or so of hose so the refrigerator can still be pushed out for cleaning underneath it. Now let's have some close-up looks. So there's a look at joining it on and what you use is a wrench in one hand and you use a crescent wrench in the other for tightening it and what you're doing is kind of this type of motion. So what it involves is, or the crescent wrench is a flat wrench that doesn't, there's not um, claws on it and it's meant for these little parts where you can just use a little wheel off the side to tighten it and you're just doing this side. Now, you may be watching this video and starting to think it's a little bit too much for me to do myself, but it's still worth having the practical knowledge of how it's done so someone doesn't pull the wool over your eyes. So that's the connection and you fit it until it's snug. And at that point, you've got a watertight connection. The collar is needed to keep the white ho hose from imploding on itself. And then as you tighten it, you're just, you're bringing it you're bringing it so there's no way for water to get out. This is a close-up of the shutoff valve and you know I just cut about 12 inches of white pipe and just shoved it in and it's compression fitting and you should you should see that it's supposed to go in about an inch for this size of pipe. It can trick you it can go in maybe a quarter of an inch and yet you really have to pay attention when you're pushing in so it goes in all the way or else you got water just going everywhere. Okay, and that's the photos that I took of doing this. All in all, it's about a two hour job to do it. By the time you pull the cupboard drawers out and you drill the holes and you know you cut the pieces and then you take a little break because you're getting sore from being bent over, it's about a two hour job. I would say it's intermediate skills. I don't think that someone who has just bought a house without any practical plumbing skills should do it. I would say to you though, if you're hiring someone to do that, I would honestly pay them to teach you at the same time to basically be their plumbing assistant 
so you can learn at the same time and start growing a skill set. So when small things with your home's plumbing break, you kind of got a base knowledge of how to do things with the plumbing and it'll help you over your lifetime. Anyway, it's hooked up now and in terms of the physical disability that I have, it's proving helpful having water closer to me and having ice on demand where the refrigerator is self-monitoring if it needs to make more ice. And I really do appreciate that. The ice is helpful when I'm going out in the summer for nature photography or working outside and keep me cool. And, you know, it's quite hard for me to get to the freezer to be dumping the ice, you know, every few hours. It's nice to have the refrigerator that does this for me automatically. And I'll be using the crushed ice feature with my pet hamster, Rocky, uh, for him to also have access to cold water. Uh, so that's what I have for you today. I hope it's been helpful to those who are fairly handy. Thanks for the time you spent with me today. Bye for now.